Hello. Should we start? Are you ready for Petra Kucha base? Yeah, okay. Here, here is just the title. I have to switch to the So, everything started with the Big Bang. Billions of years have passed. Many different theories regarding origin of the species have been raised, starting from ancient Greek philosophers to the modern biologists like von Daniken, who believed that aliens have visited Earth and made contacts with the human beings. But still, most valid theory is uh, Darwin's theory of evolution. It was 1959 when he published The Origin of the Species. It was evolutionary theory. Uh, new ideas, natural selection, variations, overproduction, fitness, struggle for existence. Now we are going to borrow Darwin's eyes and take a look at software development through Darwin's eyes. What do you think? What are we going to see? It's exciting to see on software development with Darwin's eyes. Here it is, software systems as a species, a product, an organism. Customization, different variants of products that we create, variations. Customers or customer's choice, natural selection. All species reproduce. Reproduction is the one of the most properties of the species. We also do reproduction in software development. We are creating releases. Reproduction for us, they are releasing, releases. We are creating releasing, releases, packaging them, delivering. Releases, packaging, delivering. And usually we end up with overproduction, but it's exactly what the most species do. They overproduce all the time. And also we struggle for existence on a very tough business market all the time. But what is the main difference between two different organisms or species? What is the cause of difference between that we are all unique? It's our genetic material. Genotype, it's a set of potential properties that we have usually in DNA or RNA. But what is actually visible, actual observed properties, is a phenotype. It's morphology, development, behavior. Here is an example for genotype and phenotype for eyes colors. Maybe you remember that picture from school days. What is genotype in software development? It's software architecture design. How we build in all properties in our system. But what is a phenotype? It's the way how users, customers see our system and how they use our system and how the system is integrated with other systems. As you can see from the picture, design can differ very much from user experience, as in real life. So the way how our system is used is not always as it is designed. Genes, mutation, environment has a huge influence on genotype. Same genotype can end up in a result in different phenotype in different environments. Viruses are a very good example. They are changing their RNA all the time, very responsive to changes. Influenza virus can mutate in two different ways. Drift, it's a small genetic change that accumulates over time, and shift, it's an abrupt major change when they change completely all proteins. If we use lean startup language, drift, small changing propagated during the time is persevere. Shift is a pivot. So that you do the major change in a completely different way. Natural selection, it's a survival of the organisms that are best adapted to the environment. There are always variations within species. But some advantages, variations, allow members of the species to survive better than the others. It's nothing else but best market fit. And the art is to capture those advantages variation which guarantee the best fit on a tough market. The presence or absence of gene fundamentally changes the course of evolution. Using lean startup methodology, pivot or persevere. Pivot or persevere. Natural selection acts only taking advantage of slight successive variations. It's nothing else than building minimum viable products and entering a build, measure, and learn loop. Slight successive variation, building MVP, build, measure, and learn loop. Genetic drift is the change in gene frequency from one generation to the next. 
Drift may eliminate some genes due to chance alone, rare genes. From the frog's example, we can see that the brown frogs are going to die out. They bear rare genes and they're not going to reproduce. It's the way how the mother nature eliminates never used feature or waste. <laughs> the French biologist Lamarck believed that all giraffes had short necks once upon a time. Food was up on the trees, leaves on the trees, and they were stretching their necks in order to reach the trees. So every next generation got longer necks, and in the final version of giraffes, they have a long necks and they could reach the trees. Darry had a completely another approach. He said there were giraffes with short necks and giraffes with long necks. Giraffes with the short necks died out directly because they couldn't reach their food on the trees. So only long necks giraffes survived. We should use Darwin's approach when building our products. It should create value directly from the first release. You should not release something that is half done and wait for the third or fifth release to create the value. So we should create a value from the first release. Darwin's fitness is one of the central ideas in the whole theory. It describes individual reproductive success. It's, in fact, measurement of the created value. From the graph, we can see that Lamarck's giraffes didn't create any value, no return on investment for a long time, while Darwin's giraffes were creating from the early beginning. We should think about that when building software systems. There are many similarities, but there are also differences between software evolution and evolution of the species. Evolution of the species lasts billions of years. Software evolution is much shorter. We have short time to market. Also, in software development, we have creators. We are creators that are creating our systems. So we can build them in that way to be sustainable, adaptable, and responsive to change. How? For example, by following manifesto for adaptable software development, proposed by Chaim Maccabee. Experimentation instead of specification. The discovery of requirements through experimentation. Evolution instead of implementation. The constant evolution of the system functionality to meet the dynamically varying customer needs. And adaptation instead of modification. Next, we should build anti-fragile systems as proposed by Nassim Taleb. When exposed to shock, a fragile system breaks, robust system stays the same, Resilient system go back to the previous state, while anti-fragile system evolves. It benefits from shocks and unpredictable changes. So we should also build our software system in that way that they can benefit from shocks and from impact of changes. Instead of relying on predictions, we should take advantage of variations, as proposed by Tim Hardware in Adapt Book, from predictability to experimentation. Do the same thing as the mother nature does. Create variation, select what succeeds, and repeat. The following two meanings I would like you to learn by heart and repeat any time, even in the middle of the night. It is not the strongest of the species that survive, nor the most intelligent, but the one most adaptable and responsive to change. And also continuing change, a software system must be continually adapted or it becomes progressively less satisfactory. It was Lehman's law of software evolution. It was about evolution, now it's about me, here is my genotype, here is my phenotype. I live in symbiosis with Gustav Wurstrom. I have three offsprings running here, maybe you notice them. Environment where I evolve is Sandgard Front Arena and I'm adaptable to change. So please leave your feedback. Thank you for your time. <laughs>